Hello world, it's David Herman, alias Daz the Artist in Olympia, Washington. Memorial Day weekend, people are putting their boats in the water. It's uh, 5 o'clock in the evening, and it's 529-2021, as you can see on the interface of Affinity Designer. I'm going to start an illustration today. I'm going to see... Uh, about an Akeda in flight and a clover. So let's see how we do. First things first, we will add layers. There's not going to be any music because no matter how I do it, YouTube always finds something wrong. The artists, even though they say their music is free, always find something wrong, expects to get paid. You got to take the sound out of your videos. It's just a fiasco. So no more music until such time as I partner with somebody who knows how to do all this stuff. I'm done with the music end of it. Which will make my life easier anyways. So, bottom layer, we're going to create some bloom. And the bloom is just a, a background out of focus, you know. Nature or whatever you want. And uh, let's see here. So overall, I'm going to go with a dark gray, but not black. So very close to black. Darkest tone will be here, but it won't be pitch black, okay? And I'm going to do a fill. Oh, it switched over to the white, so we'll edit, undo. We'll go to the <laughs> back at the top, see if it can keep its brain together. And there we go. Now you see how close that is to the background. That's interesting. Next, we'll go to the brush. And this will be an airbrush type brush. So let's go to brushes. Pencils works the best for that, I find. This one says natural to be. So you get a little bit of texture when you do these, you know. You can get more texture down here. Here's an interesting spray. Let's try that. So first things first, I'm going to uh, take shades of greens and browns and do this background. Okay, so I'm like a reddish brown, maybe. And when you do your blooms, you can realize how the companies themselves that post photos have airbrushed the heck out of them. So, edit, undo, edit, undo. There we go. Next layer. Next layer. And then some blooms. See? So we're just randomly doing that. So there's some browns for nature, out of focus trees and backgrounds and stuff. And as we come closer to the viewer, it'll get brighter. But it's got to be hazy looking and stuff like that. So it's always a challenge to do a nice bloom. They're not that hard to do. But it's, you know, challenging to keep it nice. So. My left hand is changing the diameter of the brush as I just wiggle this around. And so we're getting some tones in there before I actually start to bring it forward. Of a garden out of focus. Okay. And now we'll go into uh, brighter greens. And we want to take the hardness way down to zero. And uh, I don't know what that last stroke was. There we go. Interesting with a square edge, right? Oh, my goodness. Like a pencil. Huh. Kind of interesting, but we'll play with a few of them. I'm 
to do something new. Let's see what we get. This, this is kind of interesting with the, if you can use it to your advantage, the beam work like this. Um, I'm just spec making a spectrum of stuff, but I, the square edge is kind of, you know, a no-go when you're doing bloom. But now that I've got like something going, say, that I'm going to dial it in with the with the uh, pencil brush no uh, basics I'm sorry I have to think there we go and these are more like airbrushes and let's see here this should be rounder. Yeah, there we go, and softer. So we'll take uh, hardness down, and flow, and rebloom it. There we go. Get rid of some stuff. There we go. Sometimes I just, you know, it's not what I want, so I'm playing around until I get what I want. I'm like that. I will make it do what I want it to do. I will teach myself how to get that going just right. See, because you don't want light coming in like a box. Um. It doesn't really have a hard edge, even though you see it in many things. There's no hard edge to light. We're still making this garden. I always like playing with it too, the gardens. So I get each one's a little more unique than the last, and I might get an idea here and there. You can really see when there's, I'm using a reference off screen, but how they've airbrushed it to highlight the imagery. So if the, if the image itself is dark, they've made the background light. So you can tell that it's not just a random photo. They've etched these or, you know, retouched them like crazy. And now we'll make the top darker. Corner darker, even. down to the bottom a little dark and down the center of the third over at the top kind of so we're putting some trees in and we're bringing some highlights in and then you know, I can always edit this layer anytime I want. So that's good. Let's do a save. Go up a layer and let's start drawing a flower. Okay. So first we're going to make a stem. And I want kind of a yellowish green like that. I'm going to use something with a little more of a hard edge to it. So I go to my gouaches. I love this canvas brush. 
um, number three down, sorry, where it says gouache on canvas. Then I'll draw a line for the stem of the clover. on its own layer. See like that. Has a little texture to the plant. Uh, in contrast, the bottom line will be a little darker, so we'll kind of go like this. I'm holding my hand just steady and up and down. There we go. Even a little darker here where it's going to meet the flowers. At the bottom, touch of that purple look that they have in a flower. So kind of a, just a little. That's too out of shape there. <laughs> Edit, undo. I want it. To, you know how they have clover has like a little weird purple cast and stuff. I just kind of bring it up to snuff. Okay. Maybe edit that last stroke out. And now I'm going to start to put some petals in and stuff. And the cicada will be on the other side. I'm going to have a flying cicada. But before I, you know, detail it up in infinite detail, i got to find a nice white with a touch of this purple to do some petals. And there'll be browns and other stuff in later, greens, and that's crazy, but... Uh, oh yeah, and I need some stems. Let me do a small stem. So here we go. We're just going to get started, and I'm just going to work. Uh, so sometimes there's, there'll be one out here. One here. And I, you got to sketch something to get started, and then you can always modify. So not a big problem. But this is how it how it works. <laughs> Excuse me. To see me work in the stem a little bit. Some texture to this clover. And when you're on a separate layer like that, you can tidy up the outside edge just by doing that. See, because it's on a separate layer from the background. So if I want it slender, a little more slender, a little more beat up or however I want, I can do it. So edit and do. I just want to tidy it up. It was overall just a little bit wide. And that does look like nature there. So we're Oops, didn't want to erase that. I want to be uh, back on brush. Sorry about that. A little darker. Working the stem. And then I'm going to this is going to be so tricky to draw this flower, but I have to start somewhere. So I'm going to take this one on the left, and I'm going to go to a off-white, and I'm going to start to create the delicate flowers of a clover. Uh, this should be on a separate layer, too. So I'll edit, undo. So I don't mess this part up. We'll go up a layer. Broad stroke, some white on that stem, and make the little flower bells. So we're coming down. I 
I could start with the cicada, but I'm going to torture myself with the flower. This is so intricate that I really want to challenge myself. And I'm going to do things that make the eye finish the art instead of me, the artist, finish the art. In other words, I won't finish it in the minutia of detail, but like that lead edge there, you know, you finish the shape in your mind uh, the rest of the way by yourself. So that's kind of how things work. Can put a soft highlight on the background becomes a shadow and then you can just build it up little bits before you go back and forth working on them press harder for lighter mm -hmm. and each one's like a a miniature lily i would say the look of the petals in a clover. They're pretty tricky. Very intricate little tiny petals. And so, you know, you can you can do one down and then like a lot of detail. So, and then there's some purple inside. So let's say I did a little of that delicate stuff you'd see through, and some greens you'd see through. And then you like a brownish, maybe to define shapes. And then each one of these has got to be this kind of a, a detailed thing, which is very tricky. So a clover is kind of nuts to draw. <laughs> Why did I pick it? Because I want to. Because I want to make myself do it. And there's got to be more ways to, a uh, good practice for me to make it suggest there's more detail than there is without compromising the beauty of the flower. And then in the end, I would, you know, do the shadow work and stuff. I'll do a little bit on this. too dark like that So that would be a save. And in the very end, you know, I would do highlights and stuff like, say like this, and, and bring things into more focus, you know, sharper edge, tinier highlights, things like that, bring this all together.
this is just one flower, you know, one little petal. I wish there's like 50, but okay. Each one will be hand drawn and each one will be just played with. So I begin. I'm going to go up to the next, each flower, I think I'm going to put on their own layer so I can erase if I want without affecting the other flower. Now it was nice to have music. I just don't know how to do it without offending anybody that says it's a copyright infringement. Other than I buy the music and I don't want to buy the music because I, I don't make any money doing my art. I just want to um, have sound in the background without having some funky little riff that's terrible. So, eventually I shall solve that. But not right away. Because I haven't been able to solve it for years. I think I've been on YouTube for, I don't know, 10 years at least, and I haven't solved it. Of course, it's never been important to me to have music in the background. It's just something else to make it nice for you guys while you're watching. But uh, ultimately, it would be cool to have a partner. Um, that Say I made three videos on a weekend. A person came by, did that with me. They knew how to set up a YouTube channel properly so we could rebuild my channel. And they knew how to monetize it and get the ads in there and all that good stuff. And take a percentage for doing that work so I could focus on being the artist. And then, if I knew I never had to think about this and all I did was draw, oh my gosh, that would be so great. But I haven't found a person to volunteer their services yet in exchange for future money. Which tells me they just, you know, it's very hard to, I mean, the dumbest websites make the most money and I just don't want to be that. I just want to get uh, income because the labor that goes into these things is a lot of labor. And people get to watch them for free. I don't charge any money. I'm sure YouTube makes money off me with monetizing them all. And I never see a dime. But that's their game, right? Now, some people are geniuses at this. I'm not. <laughs> Sorry to say, I don't. I'm not a genius at promoting myself, unfortunately. I wish I was. I wish I was. Okay. So, there's another little clover thing out of focus. And we're building more clovers. It's kind of interesting that I'm keeping the texture of this brush so it looks like a, a painting, like a dry brush on a canvas, you know, or a chalk, pastels, Conti crayon, just dry brush work. I really like Conti crayon, that's my favorite of uh, everything. So I'm 
I'm trying to get that look. Digitally. working away. Hope everybody is doing good today. Or whatever day you're watching it. I don't know if you had a fun holiday weekend. Uh, by the time this is up, the weekend will be over. <laughs> Take the hardness off. I think when you have no hardness, you get much more delicate stuff. It, if you want that scrape look, you can leave it up. But I'm taking it off. me trying to almost sculpt these things in. Now one set of petals could take an hour if you really wanted to drill everything down to the microscopic uh, nth degree. But I don't. I just want to suggest enough realism. And uh, still have the painterly quality. And this will fill out, you know, as I start to um, add petals and stuff, you know, then see I can add a little contrast here and there before I add the next group of petals. But they're very gauzy, they're very like you tell the shape of a petal, but then there's like no particular hard line anywhere. Although you can see the separation of each petal in a tiny clover, you don't want it to be very hard edged. That's all I'm saying. And so you have fuchsia shades and you have purplish tones and mm. and then you can really delineate something sharp edged if you wanted. A 
up to you as an artist. You know, I'll put a little black here and there so you like that. <laughs> Overall, there will be, you know, more stuff in the end as far as detailing. So now we're going to move up. Uh, I've got a pedal from behind the stem. So you can see I'm drawing over it, but I will erase back. When I after I put this flower part in, and it'll be tricky, and you'll see. Okay, so say I have something like that, and I take my eraser and follow the stem. Since it's on a different layer. I can erase all that off the stem and I didn't damage my drawing see because it's in front of those layers and that's one of my nifty little tricks is erasing and drawing erasing and drawing I recommend everybody study layers you will not regret having learned how that works and uh, you'll be all the better for it So, let's edit and undo that. I'll tell you what the problem is there. The hardness, the opacity is way up. Let's get that in the 60s. Let's go back to drawing. And I have to watch that so that when I put down a soft line, it's soft and it's not, it's not harsh. I have a highlight or something like that. even on the other side, and then take the eraser and go down the side of the stem. Clean that up so the stem is in front, see, like that. Do a little save. Uh, yeah, these things do take time. There's no shortcuts. I mean, people will do tricks in that, but you will find out when you start to draw for yourself that if you're not in a time sped up artwork it takes time to draw <laughs> there's no little gimmick I mean I'm not really a big gimmick guy I'm into you know find your own way to do it and get the same result as the person you're emulating because they may not have found the trick you found but most certainly um, try and do your own thing even though you copy it. You know, I've got a reference. Everybody uses references. There's no shame in a reference, but how you get there or how many hours that person took, most of them are, you know, they're photographs, obviously, that have been retouched. So you're starting with a photograph, so you're not even drawing they don't draw anything in the beginning. They're just, you know, the art director says, make this brighter, make this sharper, make this orange instead of yellow, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But they're already starting with something that's polished, you know, a good photo. And we're drawing those photos from scratch. So, different bag. And we're trying to make it have uh, something you could follow, like the fold of the pedal, and and not be cheesy, you know, not look like I faked it, but actually like it works. So it's all doable. We're, right now, I'm just roughing this in. You know, this will be super fine tuned if I want in the end. Um, you know, one pedal at a time. But to get started. You just want to, you just want to get started, really. You just want to, um, you got to have something going before you get into all these little nooks and crannies of everything that you want to, the minutia, the tiny details, when I say minutia.
Hey, we're suggesting a clover. There's no doubt about it. We've got that clover thing going. You know, I'm getting in and I'm preparing stuff for the future here, but a little bit of a darker area here and there. Tiny flowers are very sensuous looking, very seductive, very, uh, you know, they're flowers. They're very sensuous. You want them to have that, that appeal of sensuality, I think, of uh, their feminine in nature. And so, and so the insect is drawn to pollinate. They are seduced in. We know, I will say I know, I would say scientifically we know, it's the flower that tells the bee what to do. <laughs> Most people just, you know, never thought about it or never came about it, but it's the flowers that made the insect. They needed to be pollinated. They customized their insects. We can't fathom these thoughts because we're not creators in the sense of the one creator that came out of the void. And this is just me talking. You believe whatever you want. The self-awareness that happened one day and from that creation began. And so... The creator wanted a flower, and she made herself a flower. Then she had to say, well, now I need to reproduce, and how does that work? <laughs> what is reproduction, you know? Even for the creator, the process in my mind was uh, very touch and go. When, so when nature manifests itself, see now that was done by erasing. And then we go back to brush. And we can brush, shape in, highlight. I'm not changing the tone much because I'm, you know, as far as lighter, darker, I'm just pressing harder, softer. And that way, um, it's hard to draw and talk, let me tell you. It's always been hard to draw and talk for me. There's a guy. Let's see, there we go. Now this is making a nice uh, head of a clover, slightly out of focus, one petal at a time, I mean one flower node at a time. Lots of color changes, fantastic amount of color right now, even though it's not fancy. There's a lot happening in this small space. As I continue to add my own shapes, the idea is basically little lilies. They all look like lilies. They got a, a, an edge. The petals fold in on themselves. They got a sharp edge. It's very skinny. But 
But see, now it's starting to look like a cold. Well, I mean, there's so many highlights and stuff I can add and sharp edges and stuff. But if you're doing it one petal at a time, like I'm doing, with the ultimate dream of getting to a finished flower, then there's, there's just stuff you do. You just got to... Um, you got to want to do this, first of all, because it's tedious. And you got to be deliberate. You know, it has to look like a thing. It can't just be some blurry mess. And you want it to be soft and sensuous. When I say that, all flowers are very sensuous. They have delicate edges. They have, um, some have spikes and horns and stuff, but still, the flower itself that lures you in is beautiful. And then the traps, like thorns or toxins or poisons, <laughs> all serve a purpose. Some are to kill the insect so the plant can eat it, like a pitcher plant or something like that, you know. Carnivorous plants or fruits, you know, berries, they, they're there for the birds, but they put thorns on them so people can't pick them. I think, even though people need them and love to eat them to survive, like I just had blueberry pancakes today I made in my house, um, to get the blueberries, which this t in this case I bought them in a store, but as summer goes on and they start to bloom, then I'll get them off the vine and get blackberries. And uh, I will get stuck a million times. And sometimes there's a something I'm allergic to when I get stuck by plants. So my skin will break out. So I have to wear a glove. And then I, when I take the glove off, sometimes I do something, stick myself. And when it comes to nature, um, it's always trying to outsmart us. That's looking pretty cool. I'm going to fill this out first before we rough in the cicada. Let's start at the top. These are going to be more fanned out. So, and then covered by parts coming forward. So... I'm going to start one over here, just like that. And at the bottom, they kind of look like roots of your teeth, you know, the way they come down to points when they attach. And then the outside edge is kind of like that. And then it fills out like that. And there you got a petal, see? Now, you want it that petal to have solid areas, transparent areas, and so on. So you do that. They're very tricky. They are. I'm going to tell you, you can play with the background too around them, see like that, for some contrast. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to change stuff. And you can always erase, modify. Whatever you got to do, you can do it. So, you know, if it needs to be more linear, like that, if you want to see into it or have it wrap around it. So, if it's more wrapped around it, you're going to see the outside, like that. And if you want to tighten the edge up sharp, you would run your eraser right down the edge, like that, and clean it up. See how I sharpened that? So I could do that and make edges even with an eraser. And the point is that uh, the eraser is a tool. Don't think of it as correcting mistakes. Think of it as a tool. Like you erase to expose something. You erase to create an edge. So 
So we have one. And we'll go to the next one. Now the next one's going to be a little bit behind this one. So I'll go up a layer. And I'll draw right over it, but then I'll erase back. I'll show you. So I'm going to draw right over it. This again is the eraser tricks. And I'm just drawing the flower like the first one doesn't exist. The first petals in front, they don't exist. And then I'll shape it. And then I can take an eraser and erase it, the front one so that it's in front of the one behind. See how I did that? Now again, we're keeping this kind of soft focus because the focus is going to be on the cicada when I do it. It'll be sharper, it'll be closer to the viewer. And so we'll go up another layer to do another kind of uh, petal. Another flower of the flower. So each, each of these individual flowers are part of the composite cloak, just so that you know. And there's some texture that way. I might have it, you know, torqued, like so, tidy. <sighs> They're all so tricky. Mm -hmm. And we're keeping them soft, and we're keeping them with a texture, and we're keeping them hard edge or soft edge or transparent or not transparent. But you can see the structure. Now, some of you might be really fast at this. You know, it's not my forte to do them every day, so I build things up little by little. Suggest. And they go to the next layer and just continue. But I am getting a clover. I, I think you notice that now. It's starting to be a plant. It's starting to be a flower. And the more you do it, like I've never drawn one of these before, the more I get um, little more ideas, tips. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice uh, out of focus kind of thing there, I'll say. So look at that. It's starting to be a clover. There's a lot more to do. <laughs> I'll put a bunch of layers in there. Let's go back down to the pixel there. And this way, when I go back, if I want to do things that I uh, don't see till I start reworking, till I go in for uh, detail, because there's a shape, just like a lily, it opens. And there's an edge, a beautiful edge. And then you're looking inside. And then it's a cup shape. You know, lots of delicate stuff. And then I would, to really fine tune this, you have to take the brush tip way down. Now I'm just doing what I said like I'm going to do here to, to make this work. And I'm going to uh, add my own spin on things. So, we'll put some light right here. I think would be just beautiful. And that kind of stuff is the things I do when I'm just working. I'll say, you know, I'm going to modify this photo even. If my reference is good, but. I would rather it did this. I'd rather see this. Or if it was up to me to be the guy doing the retouching, maybe I would do it differently. 
So. I like structure. You know, it's another thing. Detail is, there's got to be lots of detail, right? And there has to be lots of structure for detail. So I will do that um, as I work, you know? Just throw in a little bit of a tone here and there, some drama. Okay, let's fill it out towards the right now. Go up one. And draw in some petals. And this is fairly, fairly complicated. As you can see. So if that's a, that's a petal there, then you can work your detail. You can take your brush way down to a hard line, see like that. And uh, have a maybe petal folding in from the top. You go hard line there, hardish. Come in like that. Overlap. Then you would throw in some shadow. You know, lightly. And where it joins into the stem. <laughs> that stroke was ridiculously wide. Sorry about that. Let's just, um, there we go. Bring a couple in like that. A couple limish green looks to it here. Like that. There might even be small petals pushing out, you know, from or left from something that broke. You can do that. I'm digging it. It's, it's very soft focus. It's very, while trying to be realistic, we're maintaining an artistic quality, a painterly quality about it. Go up and do another. And this is going to get bigger. The petals will get bigger. So there's a little uh, fill, and now I will shape those. So, like that. If I want this to come forward, like that, show the lip, split, a little bit of light. Yeah, you're taking this delicate uh, object and making it beautiful by, you know, just revealing the true structure of it. And you know, when you look at clovers, there's purples, there's pinks, there's fuchsias. It's so subtle. The clover is just one of the most beautiful, tiniest flowers. I love these things. And there could be really dramatic whites in front, but right now we're finally getting to like a shape of the flower itself. I had a buddy that was a photographer. He, he died during COVID. And, uh, He was excellent. He, he didn't make his living out of photography, but he had lots of cameras and he loved to do it. It was his passion. He never even tried to make a living as a cameraman. 
Uh, we met in the printing profession as a lithographer. We lived close to each other in downtown Detroit. We started out just so poor. It was unreal. And so uh, just starved. I mean, we were so skinny, so broke. We could barely pay our rent. We had to take buses, three of them each way to work. And for some reason, right now, as I'm drawing this delicate flower, I'm thinking of him. So, I'm uh, also thinking, bless his spirit and his soul. He did pass uh, at the end of last year. We are older people, so he had, uh, unfortunately, ended up in a assisted living situation, and there were complications. So I'm not going to get into that. But he was a very good photographer. That I am saying, and this picture somehow reminds me of his photography. I think because he just, he had a way about his art form, but he never, he never wanted to really to make a living with it. I'm, I'm, maybe he, you know, gave away prints. He did some really cool stuff with terrariums. He put a statue of a Buddha in a terrarium. And then he had all these plants growing in there and he took silhouette pictures of Buddha sitting in a jungle when it was really a terrarium on a table that were just staggeringly beautiful. I mean, his best work was that Buddha. And of course we were into yoga and we were into Tai Chi and we were into, he was into Qigong. And our youth was spent uh, exploring. My generation is explorers. We were like people that came to a new world. In truth. We're old, we graduated high school in 1968. <laughs> you can imagine anybody that old that's still talking <laughs> after this crazy last times we've all been around here. All right, so now there's a out of focus. I'm gonna add um, some things here and there to, to make this pop a little bit before I start the cicada, and then I can always return to this if I wish. But I'm going to make this work now as a, a, as a drawing. Let's get that part going. You're watching me give it uh, the form to some of these petals and bring them closer or further. And it's still soft focus, right? I haven't gone in and dialed this up into anything fantastic. And I'm going to put a few more at the top to balance that out just right. Go up a layer and work some petals just to the right top in that gap. Just want to put something else in here. It's a beautiful day out. It's a Memorial Day weekend, and the sun and the weather is just, for some reason, exquisite today <laughs> in the Northwest. But I didn't take my boat out, my little uh, pack raft, because there's probably a crowd of like a zillion people out there. And I'll probably not do it tomorrow, but the day after when the week starts. So that it'll be beautiful weather, but I won't have to 
deal with parking lots full of people and stuff like that. Today would be the perfect day, though, for sure. But it's just the beginning of summer, so there will be plenty of perfect days. One has to remember that. Always. No matter how it seems that there may not be another day that's perfect, there will always be a perfect day. Life is like that. So when you get down, it gets up. When you're up, it gets down. When you're wild, it gets crazy. Mm-hmm. Now we need to darken a few interior spots in between the flowers, like just for some definition. And then I'm, I'm kind of feeling I've got a good start to this clover. And I'm sorry, this is real-time drawing for me. Uh, I'm just not the fastest guy on the planet Earth, you know. However, if you try doing this, Maybe this is super fast. <laughs> These are tough things to do. You know, not to butcher it, not to make it look crummy, too dark, too soft, too nothing, this, that, the other thing. Interesting, interesting, interesting. File save. Then we could jazz up colors and have some light. You know, I'll just do a little bit of light like it was hitting it. So. You'd see it through the flower like, like just some, that's a big change when you add your light, you know. See, look at the top where I'm doing that. It's just, it's sort of like inside the petal. And I like the kind of gauzy, not super hyper-focused yet. Nothing like that. Oh, um, that's a bad stroke. Edit, undo. Just come down again from the top. That's good. Then way at the top here, let's get some highlight edge. A little more sharp edge. Like that. And don't worry about it going off the object to take my eraser and I just come back and clean that edge up see don't want it too bumpy don't want it too smooth very nice and that's pretty cool so we did that much roughed it in all the detail would be later and that took an hour so, it doesn't depress me, <laughs> but that's a lot of time. So I'm going to rough in the cicada, and let's see, we're going to go another layer up there. <sighs> let's go with a gunmetal blue, kind of. So I'm going to start like that, and I'm going to rough in a body. So uh, let's start with the back of the torso. See if I can do this. So it'll be this spot. And this is just a dry brush with I would fine tune all of this. That's going to be here, like that. It's a triangle, the back of the head. 
like that. Maybe another part here. And this is kind of the neckish area of the back of the head. Dry brush, dry brush, right? Just the eyes would be here. They're going to be like a uh, like a color of a shoe, like a reddish brown, like a Murphy loafers. <laughs> Uh, Johnston and Murphy was a brand we used to wear as salesmen. It's got that kind of a. Still love those shoes, man. Uh, dressing as a salesman was so much fun, even though it's not my mindset now. I would love to to dress up like that again if there was somewhere to go on the earth, <laughs> where I had to be dressed up in a suit. But there's just nowhere. My life is so different than when I was a salesman once upon a time before I just did all the other art things and oh I was always an artist and I gotta say sales was so neurotic um, because I knew nothing about it when I got in I taught myself completely taught myself had no mentors for that just went out and did it got beat up severely by the planet Earth. Picked myself up, dusted myself off, and kept knocking on doors. Took a certain tenacity to do it. But I kind of made a profession out of something that really it wasn't the profession like where you could get trained by somebody. and It, it was... Um, a connection profession. Wherever you're in sales, back when I was a salesman, it was it wasn't um, that you said train me. <laughs> you had to just they expected you to have sales when you walked in the door, right? So how do you get there? Those days were tough as heck. Boy, were those tough. I gotta admit, it was a hard life. Everything was hard. Learning everything, always connecting. Nighttime, daytime, getting up early, 12 hour days or more, seven days a week. It's just uh, it's a tough life. A student that works full time for two or three jobs and goes to school full time, they have my total admiration because I did the same thing in a different way. And I was a single dad, so. was brutal. Just a brutal existence of required dedication. Wanted to learn. Wanted to be something. Didn't want to give up. No matter what happened and bad things happened. Car accidents. Uh, you know, losing your house. The economy collapsed just like recently. And it was just... You have to always want to keep succeeding. And some people have got connections or they have friends that help them. That's fine. But when you just, out of the blue, want to be something, and you go out to do it, like a UFC fighter, let's say, or a, a doctor, whatever, it's tough. It's really tough don't give other people enough credit for their hard work. I mean, they're never sleeping. You look hungry. You look starved. Because you are. All the artists back in Detroit that were going to uh, Center for Creative Studies back in the day, which was in the top five IT schools, you know, industrial design, where you learned how to get into the car companies or product design, like say someone's making a toaster and you're, they've invented the guts and you got to make the design that goes on the outside. Um, it's quite, quite amazing what people go through to earn a living. Getting off on a tangent, but I'm kind of just, I got to think of the angle of this thing. So I'm going to kind of go this way. Oh, more 
taper, a little wider here, a little more taper, and then a cornical tail. We'll go off camera for that, off screen. Take the eraser, tidy this up a little. See, this is what your eraser does. You can do that. Go backwards and forwards. And of course, your eraser doesn't have to be 100, 100, 100. You can change it to all those parameters. So if you want a softer edge, you can do that. Right now, I'm just, you know, reminding myself of stuff that I'll need to get into. save that it's kind of the rough without any detail and then I'm going to do like an arc of the wing one up one down so uh, they're kind of large they're as big as the body when they're open they're actually bigger so uh, whoop, a mini eraser edit undo Go to brush, go to a new layer. Don't want to mess with the body. And that, something like that. Hmm. Okay. So it's like a sign where one wing is up, one wing is down. Sign curve, like the letter S. What's interesting is it actually bends, it flexes. So it's here, and there's another little wing uh, comes out here. <laughs> I don't know, it's practice for me. Just practice for me. These things could take a thousand hours if you did it right. Could take, I mean, a couple hundred, anyways. <laughs> really good. It's no joke, people. Things could take infinity. Depends how much detail you want to do. That, and then uh, we get a black line here. Let me go at the top and just kind of just shadow there. Get a little darker. Say shadow there. Shadow there, and shadow like that, like that. Yeah, it's kind of a twerky thing. Or this is torqued. There's a knob. Good study for robots, too. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of that. And on the bottom. So the first wing that comes out, it's like musk, you know, just all this structure. Mm, so many wings. So I'll do a save there. And let's see how far we're into this. This is uh, 
Oh, it stopped on me. Wait, 116. Okay, so I'm going to pause. Well, it turns out I'm going to be called away from the computer, so I'm going to end this. There'll be a part two. Thank you.